dysmenorrhea. It is India's largest silent problem. Largest because a very large majority of girls and women suffer from it. And silent because in spite of suffering from problems, very few women seek treatment. Why so? There are three reasons for this. First, a girl's own beliefs. Girls themselves consider period pain to be normal. So why to seek treatment? Second reason is society. The society also considers period pain to be normal. And the third, healthcare access. In India, healthcare access is a big challenge. Eliminating dysmenorrhea requires the collective efforts of we doctors. With a simple two-step strategy, we can control this problem to a large extent. Step 1. Whenever a patient comes to us with a complaint of dysmenorrhea, we must confirm that it is not because of any underlying gynecological problem and it is primary dysmenorrhea. Step 2. The main focus of the treatment must be on muscle spasms and pain relief. To achieve this, painkillers and antispasmodic drugs are recommended. These have drugs such as mephenemic acid, paracetamol, diclofenac, which are prostaglandin inhibitors and relieves pain relievers. Dicyclamine relaxes uterine muscles. The combination of mephenemic acid and dicyclamine has been found to be very effective and it suits almost everyone. That's why medicines such as Meftalspas, which has this combination, is preferred choice of doctors and it is also the most prescribed medicine. Contraceptive pills must not be prescribed for treatment of dysmenorrhea because there is no strong evidence that contraceptive pills successfully treat dysmenorrhea. It is very important to consult a doctor to treat dysmenorrhea because antispasmodic drug provide pain relief. They also improve the quality of life significantly. As a woman progresses ahead in her reproductive cycle, the dysmenorrhea pain also becomes milder. As long as a girl continues suffering from dysmenorrhea, she can take antispasmodic medicines like Meftalspas during every menstrual cycle. Girls must endure period pain even if life comes to a standstill. We must not let our patients have these beliefs. This is the collective responsibility of we doctors.